Danny, I, I saw a story on Sportico, the business of sports, a couple of nights ago. Loved it and sent it around to you guys and said, we got to talk to the author. And he is with us now on the BetQL guest hotline. Eric Jackson, who's a sports biz reporter, wrote about Bobby Wagner shadowing and spending time with Roger Goodell, getting access to the commissioner that players have never had before previously. Uh, so, Eric, thank you so much for a few minutes here in D.C. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be on. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it, bud. Excellent feature story on Wagner. But I guess let's start with how did this come about? Why Bobby Wagner? And, and for people that didn't read it, exactly what did he do when he got to shadow uh, Commissioner Roger Goodell? Yeah, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, Bobby's a persistent guy, right? Bobby Wagner. And he had been wanting to get on the commissioner schedule for quite some time. And, you know, he was able to finally do that. And obviously they, you know, he got access that other players have never had. And, you know, as I put in the story, it, it started out with a hot yoga session, right? Which the commissioner does multiple times a week here in, in New York. And, um, you know, and come to find out through my own reporting, Bobby's a big yoga fan too, right? So they, they kicked off the day together enjoying a, a hobby that they both really like. And, and yeah, after that, right? I mean, they, you know, Bobby got to be a fly on the wall, right? For, you know, sitting in on the all 32 owner call, you know, something players just really don't get access to, right? Different meetings, going to Rock Nation through their partnership and hearing about that kind of stuff. So, you know, I think for Bobby, you know, who has big aspirations when he's done playing, um, you know, I think for him it was a real treat just to be a part of that. So what's the what's the end game here? Like, is he like a, a, a Troy Vincent in training? Is it like is he going to be in the NFL front office? Uh, what what is this leading to? Is it just kind of getting an inside working as how you know the NFL goes and he can then go to wherever he wants with it? Like, what's what's the next step here, Eric? Yeah, no, definitely for sure. I mean, I think you know Bobby Bobby's definitely has aspirations of. You know, obviously it's lofty to be the next commissioner, right? Or not, you know, a commissioner down the road. It's definitely a lofty goal. But, you know, um, he definitely has interest of being maybe a team president, right? Or working the league office, right? So, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, I think Bobby is, is open and ultimately to having a, you know, a really important leadership role in the NFL. You know, who knows what that'll be right day? Uh, who knows what that'll be one day? But yeah, no, definitely. He, uh, He's definitely put uh, planting the seeds, if you will. Yeah, he accompanied Goodell to all of his meetings, occasionally speaking, uh, according to your story, on behalf of players in some of those meetings. Everybody knows Wagner is a nine-time Pro Bowler and a six-time All-Pro and this Hall of Fame incredible linebacker who's now 34. I was asking someone about him recently after reading this, and they said something to the effect of, like, he's a really curious guy. He's the kind of guy that you know wants to find out like how things work and, and why they are done the way they are. He doesn't just kind of hear this is how it's done, which I love. I mean, what what kind of insight can you give us into him from the time you spent around him just as a person? Because he seems like he's sharp as a tack. Yeah, no, definitely. And Bobby's really different. Listen, I've written and covered and spoken to a lot of athletes. And, you know, Bobby really is different. And you mentioned curiosity. And I think that is what really separates him. And, and you know, the feature story is about Bobby Wagner, but really I look at the story, it's really about the modern athlete, right, and taking an advantage of their own resources, right? I think I think so many pro athletes, they don't really tap into the resources until the end of their careers or after their careers are over. And, you know, Bobby at a really early age in Seattle was already tapping into Microsoft and Amazon and other, you know, executives in the area and, you know, ownership, right? And, you know, a lot of athletes don't realize that, you know, they have access to ownership who are very successful business people, right? So it's, um, and leveraging that, right? And, you know, taking advantage of that, that expertise that you really don't get once it's all said. And when you hang up your cleats, it's kind of hard to get back into the, into the room, if you will. So, um, so yeah, I mean, and, you know, as I put in the story, you know, Bobby just, you know, reach out to different people and connected to this person and that person. And, you know, Bobby also has interest in music and, you know, he's very cool with Dave Free, Kendrick Lamar's childhood friend. And, you know, so, I mean, even when Bobby played in LA, he was tapping into Hollywood and Silicon Valley networks. Right. So I think for, for Bobby, it's just the curiosity is the perfect word to say. He's just somebody who really, really is like, like you mentioned, Telling him what it is is not enough, right? Do, do we know where it. that that came from? You know, you you referred to it as almost I think there was even a quote maybe from Goodell, like a passion for growth and development. 
And I'm sure that's part of why you become one of the greatest linebackers ever when you weren't supposed to be. But off the field, like there are people that are just like interested in finding out how to become better and listening to self-help stuff. And then there are people that just kind of do their thing and exist and wake up and go to work and come home. Like, do we know when it began for him? Yeah, no, that's a really good point. And, you know, obviously, as you as I put in the story, you know, his, his mother is no longer with us, unfortunately, but she was very big in the numbers and she was working in the finance industry. And I think he really at a young age started to get really curious about the business side. And um, and then you marry that with sort of his underdog. And, you know, he was like a two star guy coming out of high school. Right. It was, Bobby wasn't one of these athletes who had all this you know, uh, recognition and stuff, you know? So I think from a really early age, Bobby was kind of very ready to chart his own path and, um, you know, and be resilient in that too, you know, not just on the field, but off it too. And, um, you know, he's a business major at Utah state, you know? So I think at a very early time, Bobby was really into it. And then once he got to Seattle, it was just like, it was a wrap, you know what I mean? I think he was just, he, he fell all in, and took advantage of the Rolodex that came around him. So we got uh, Eric Jackson with us from Sportico here. I wrote a great story about Bobby Wagner trailing and sort of shadowing uh, Roger Goodell for a day plus, kind of learning on the job. Um, so just going to Wagner specifically uh, about that curiosity and, and, and everything else, I kind of I was wondering there are a few athletes now that have kind of walked this road, not just. I'm going to use my, you know, my Twitter platform for some sort of like activism or charity cause or, or the news of the day or, or, or social issues. But I think of folks like Magic Johnson, LeBron James has kind of taken it to another level where they're the CEOs of this huge business enterprise. And I've always kind of wondered, and not everyone could be LeBron, obviously, you know, to be at the highest level of basketball for two decades plus, but using that platform for to be that kind of CEO of your own sort of brand and, or, and organization. And it sounds like that's something that, that Wagner is sort of trying to cultivate for himself and maybe even for others. Definitely for sure. And I think the league in a lot of ways looks at Bobby as an example of somebody that other players can look at and be like, wow, maybe I can come to New York and come to the league office and come hang out in the community relations department or the marketing and, you know, one of the reasons Robbie got into a commercial last year was because he came to the marketing department. You know, when the when they started talking about the commercial, Bobby happened to be there in the office, right? So, you know, sometimes it's the right timing and different things, but but yeah, man. And I think another good example for Bobby, you know, he he represents himself. You know, he just did his own deal with the Commanders by himself. He he did his own in Seattle, which made him the highest paid middle linebacker at that time too, right? So, you know, a lot of guys. Um, you know, don't really walk the walk the same way. And Bobby really is, you know, he's one of the few stars in the league who represents themselves. And, you know, I think that says a lot about him just uh, wanting to do the work himself and not, you know, so many guys lean on an advisor or an agent or this guy or that guy. And Bobby's like, no, I want to do it myself. And I think that says a lot about you know, his own character and, you know, you don't, and you just don't get there right by yourself. Right. I think he's absorbed so many other people. I think that's like, I mentioned the story, Steve Ballmer, Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson. I mean, he just, he like, he's a sponge, you know, he just, he, he wants to just take what he can from everybody who's been successful in their, in their field. So Eric, the flip side of that is the league itself. I, but my biggest surprise and takeaway from the story is that, is that Goodell and the league, et cetera, said, okay, I don't know that it just, I've always associated the NFL as the no fun league where we'll find you more for wearing incorrect socks than for like driving drunk, like over the years, you know what I mean? Like they, they hate individualism for, until recently. It was like, if you celebrate it all, it's a 15 yard penalty or, or whatever. Now, it's kind of surprised me that they're encouraging this to a degree. Is that something that surprised took you back as well? Or, or is this now just kind of where we are? No, I think in the reporting process, I was also a little taken aback. You know, I was told, from someone who works at the league, how a player came to New York, he came to the league office and he wanted to ask the commissioner a couple of questions. And he ended up sitting there for more than half an hour. And the commissioner answered all his questions. Right. And even the player was surprised that Roger gave him that time and answered all his questions. And, you know, so I think even players sometimes are like, Oh, what? Like the commissioner will let me come talk to him for a little bit. Or, you know what I mean? I think there's, um, maybe it's the image thing or whatever it is, maybe intimidation or whatever. But yeah, I think even the players are sometimes surprised. But 
Um, but to get a full day with Roger like Bobby did, that's just very, you know, that just doesn't happen. And it's really a testament to Bobby just being persistent, right? And I think Roger has come over the years to really take a liking to Bobby too. So um, now, like you mentioned in the beginning of this, maybe Bobby's wrangling a little bit to uh, one day, you know, have a prominent position in the league office. But, um, you know, I don't want to speak for him, but, um, you know, maybe there's a little bit of that. Too. And nothing wrong with that if right. that's what he wants to do. I mean, hey, Troy Vincent uh, was a great player. He finished his career here. Maybe he's walking in Troy Vincent's footsteps. Who knows? Eric Jackson, Sportico on Grant and Danny. Last thing I got for you, I don't know how much you guys talked ball or commanders, but it is interesting, interesting to me that he came here. This is not a team that's probably going to win. He signs the one-year deal. We know that he wanted to, to reunite, he said publicly, with his favorite coach, Ken Norton. He was happy to come back and work with Dan Quinn as well. So basically the staff being cool got them Bobby Wagner, but it's he's not ring chasing very likely. Uh, curious just about if he talked you know, about the role he's going to have here, which is leader of men and trying to grab some face mask in a young locker room. Yeah, you know, it's funny because usually when I talk to these guys and, and, and ladies too, you know, I usually talk to him about what's happening off the field, right? Or off the court. So we didn't get too much in a ball, but I do know that um, DQ being in charge played a huge role. I don't think he plays for the commanders if DQ is not in charge. And you mentioned Ken Norton. And, you know, I think the, I think the opportunity to lead a young locker room was really important to him as well. And um, so, yeah, no, for sure. I think, like you mentioned, Probably not probably not winning a title this year, but I think Bobby's appreciating his last couple stops. And I think Bobby knows that his, his playing chapters are, you know, could be coming to an end here within the next, you know, few seasons. So, um, so yeah, that's, um, so yeah, that's it. And it, it's a little bonus that he's working on his NBA at nearby Howard too, right? So I think it all works out. I love it. Go get that master. It is awesome. Eric, this is great, man. Really appreciate it. Great story as well. Thanks for the time. You guys take care. Thanks for having me. Darius and I were talking about this. And I said, man, I love Bobby Wagner. And Darius said, I still can't believe he's here. <laughs> it is very funny that I mean, it's been a long, 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 long time since this team was able to attract that type of player. Yeah. And you could say that they overpaid at the end of someone's career, maybe in the early Snyder days. But I don't think this is that. Like, this isn't Bruce Smith chasing the sack record, and they gave him the biggest contract, and they went on their $100 million spree. This was a bunch of teams probably offered something similar, and he chose here. And in his case, he chose here because of the coaching staff, because he loves Norton, because he loves Dan Quinn, and that's why he came here. But it's awesome that Bobby Wagner, a six-time All-Pro, they don't have a player that's won an All-Pro other than Brandon Sheriff over nearly 30 years. A six-time All-Pro and a nine-time Pro Bowler said, yeah, I'll go to Washington. Let's yeah, the Hall of that. Famer who, who, can, who could have picked up a lot of different spots, who's still pretty productive chose here he's, he's not what he was when he was 27 but still pretty good better than what they've had certainly at that spot and it's just the, like the all world all around mensch like what there's just a star like instantaneously you know what i mean like there is a gravitas there is a, a a weight to what he says what he does and how he does it and they've needed some of that right i mean you've had great guys like guys like john allen who do all the right things and just want to win and tara mclaurin etc but when the dude that is on the mountaintop Nobody's pushed him off yet. You know, the, still the all-time leading tackler in, in Seattle Seahawks history and will be for a long, long time, I might add. Like, that Hall of Famer walks in and says, this is how we're doing it. You're absolutely right, Mr. Wagner. We'll do it that way. There's no questioning who runs that locker room mm -hmm. anymore. Not to say that they didn't have some decent leaders before, but move over John Allen, mm -hmm. with all due respect. Yeah. Bobby Wagner's here now. He's got this. You, you can be uh, his Robin if you'd like, or, or not. It's up to you. But, yeah, that's the guy that's going to be given the speech on the Saturday night before the big game in the team hotel. Who's that guy on offense? I think we're going to have to figure that out as we go. Ideally, your young quarterback becomes your leader that is going to give the pep talk and pick people up when they're down. But that just naturally takes some time. I also found it really interesting that in the offseason hard knocks of the New York Giants, we got to see their evaluations of every quarterback. And we didn't see the whole thing, but their quick breakdowns of each QB with their area scouts that spent so much time around the players. And the guy in the, the South East who covered LSU and was responsible for a report on Jaden Daniels gave a report that included 
He said he's not going to be a vocal leader. He's working on that. He improved in that way quite a bit this year. But naturally, he's not necessarily a vocal leader, which is not, I don't think, an end-all, be-all when you're still in college. I mean, that that will come. There are plenty of guys who have had to develop in that regard. But if we know Bobby Wagner's that guy on defense, is Terry that guy on offense? Maybe. He's not really a vocal leader, though. Terry is a watch-what-I-do-and-follow-me guy. And I think hopefully Jaden Daniels is that kind of guy and can add some of the vocal stuff. The vocal leader on offense last year was Charles Leno, Logan Thomas, like those types of guys. Yeah. They're both gone now. Right. Yeah. And, and Maybe it, Austin Eckler becomes it, that guy. It could be. And, and listen, it's not an indictment to say that somebody's not a vocal leader. It's, it's not like a bad thing. It's no. you, want, you want to be authentic. They're just styles. Like Ryan Zimmerman's not going to give a big yeah. uh, throw a table over and yell at people. He's not a rah-rah guy. He's all he's going to do is go about his business and be there for if you want to talk. But there's there is something to be said for it, right? Like to to find that person. And if you're not authentic when you're doing it, guys see through it. It takes like five minutes where it's like, look at this tryhard. And you you roll your eyes at at somebody that's like, all right, guys, I took a class on leadership. Everyone follow me. Let's work together. It's like you're so phony, and everybody knows it's got to be a real thing where it's part of your DNA, part of your personality. And they've lacked that. 